Hi guys, and I hope you're doing well. Today I'll be talking about Clan Umbra and their playstyle, their champion and their cards. So let's get down to it. Umbra wins by making their creatures huge. Picking Umbra as your primary or secondary allows you to utilize Rage, Ember Drain, Trample, Lifesteal and Damage Shield keywords. Rage keyword is shared with the Held one, and each stack increases your damage by 2, but it loses 1 stack at the end of each round. Ember Drain is unique to Umbra and is probably the worst thing that could happen to you. Each stack of Ember Drain drains one of your embers for that turn, and then loses 1 stack. Trample allows your killing damage to overflow to the back ranks. And each stack of lifesteal allows you to get your attack value as healing after dealing damage. Damage shield absorbs the next hit, and then reduces its stack by 1. Umbra is making the creatures huge clan. Umbra also is the has terrible time with higher covenants clan as they need some time to get going, and a bad early game means you don't have the resources needed to go beyond the dollars and fell in higher covenants. One good synergy in the past was getting value from morsels dying thanks to harvest cards, but the recent patch saw an end to that. So here's a general idea of what other clans has in store for the Umber. Hellhorn is a great ally for anyone, and not just for the Umber. Hellhorn offers armor, which lets Umber protect their frontliners and synergizes well with lifesteal, which is Umber's primary defensive measure. Torches also fix a huge gap in Umber's game plan, which is hunting down enemy backliners and collectors. What Awoken offers in comparison is great frontliners which Umbra also has and possible backline manipulation, which is not guaranteed due to card RNG. Stygian has some synergy with Incant, but for that to matter, you would want Stygian primary, not allied. Melting Remnant has no direct synergy with Umbra now that morsels are nerfed to not count as dying for harvest effects. However, Melting Remnant happens to be very strong in the early game, which is where Umbra needs the most help. The reason I don't like this alliance is because then you don't really have any way to hurt backliners at all, as Melting Remnant also suffers from a lack of direct damage spells. I think Penumbra is one of the strongest champions and Monstrous Tree is mostly the choice, but with enough morsel support, Glutton will end up better. However, that build will lack Trample in the early game, which is the real draw to monsters in the first place. Pick an Umbra will give you access to minor upgrade of Damage Shield 2 at the Merchant of Steel. Passive Damage Shield isn't very good, as you don't have any real control over what it blocks. So let's take a look at Umbra's comments now, shall we? Mine Collapse you will mostly be using this card to kill off backliners that have low HP, so the slay conditional is almost guaranteed. The card itself isn't very good, but with Umbra it's definitely usable. Primal Dust, a hard sell as damage shield blocks 1 damage just as happily as it blocks 4 damage has a chance to be game-breaking if you're generating 10 plus embers a turn, but if not, there should be better ways for you to spend ember on. Immortal Trait This is not a bad card, just very situational. Lifesteal 3 means your penumbra isn't going anywhere for the next 3 turns, but ember drain forces you to play less. Packed Morsel Uncommon or rare morsels are pretty strong, so this card should keep you full until you find better access to them. Perils of Production Very rarely worth it, if ever. 
Ember Drain effect dramatically overcomes any good this card could have done. Might get you out of a bad spot, but you should avoid being in positions where this card is needed in the first place. Rubble Morsel. You don't want this guy as a card. If you do end up drawing this guy, you fucked up big time. Space Prism. Plus one capacity is never truly bad, especially for no cost. You can afford to run two in your deck. A three might be pushing it a bit. And Tombra Assault. You will be using this one to deal with backliners. It does a decent job and pick it if you don't have any other ways of doing so. The extra morsels it gives you ends up feeling pretty good for the low cost. Shade Splitter. Your starting card as Umbra. Not terrible and not bad. Keeps your guys full until better cards come along. You want most of these purged by circle 7 or 8. Making of a Morsel. The morsel it creates is very strong, but it's just one card in your deck. Unless you're giving it hold over, I would recommend leaving this one at home. Prism Retrieval could draw you an extremely angry Taker of Crowns, or might give you the buffest Rubble Morsel ever. I don't see this one working. Entumbra Morsel, a morsel that gives you plus 4 to health. If you are drawing this guy, you... well, you know what you've done. Ember Cash. Ember Cash. Embers give you two embers and draw you one, effectively replacing themselves. I mean, it's not bad, but it takes somewhat long to come online. Feast. I don't like it, as it feels too greedy, but might work if you upgrade it with holdover. Void Binding, one of the better binding cards. My advice is don't pick more than one binding, as you really don't want to stack Amber Drain. Cannibalize, note that the sacrificed creature doesn't have to be a morsel. This one can find some use clearing wavered imps or draft in those alliances. Crucible Collector is one of the best front lines Umbra has to offer. Now about to have same health as Collector, Crucible Warden is a force to be reckoned. Pick as many as you can fit and Crucible Wardens will win the game for you. Emberforge. You usually don't have enough good creatures to fill all three rooms, so you should always have a level available for this guy, and it feels good as long as you can keep it alive. Engine upgrade. The downside is largely irrelevant until Covenant level 20, which gives minus one capacity to a random floor. So a great card until 20, pick with care post 20. Morsel Master. This guy has a higher buffing ceiling compared to his brother Morsel Maker, but it's largely dependent on the rarity of your morsels. If all you got access to are common morsels, then Morsel Maker is better. Alloyed Construct. I had a paragraph written to tell you he is not worth it. Then he got buffed in the most recent patch to absurd levels. He is no Crucible Warden, but now he is definitely close. Cave in. So, you need Ascend or Descend effects as Umbra to win in higher covenants, and Cave in is the only way to get it without alliances. Therefore, one of the greatest cards you can have. Crucible Extension. I found myself preferring the common version of this card, but this one's also great post upgrades. Gravel. Very cool. Damage Shield really makes a difference when you can pick who gets it and when, and Morsel Amount is also great. You do need to lower its cost though. 
Morsel Maker. I think I've just picked this guy every single time I went Umbra Primary. Allows you to stop thinking about a level altogether. And if you can ascend or descend him to another already established level, he will feed that level till Kingdom Come. An excellent card and an excellent combo piece the Umbra desperately needs. Shadow Eater. I really like Shadow Eater, but he sharply drops off after the first boss. He's not even worth a mention after the second. Excavation Eruption Without free access to increased spell damage and at Ember Cost 4, this card's a hard pass, I'm afraid. Gem Troll Mana Cost 4 is very difficult to make use of in a normal run. If you think you can make it work, go for it. Forever Consumed Was it buffed? 30 damage for each point of Ember is actually very competitive. It's a beast of a card now. Kindle, pretty cool, but you'll need to remove the consume from it. Shroud Spike. So after playing around with it a bit, I can say that this card enables game winning plays on normal cards, so go for it. Even a normal frontline becomes a boss killing menace if you can give them 10 plus stacks of lifesteal or damage immunity. Morsel Miner All hail the Morsel Lord. Wretch If you're playing this one, you're a lot more courageous than I am. Shroud Mitosis Triple a Morsel why? Furnace Tap Multi-Strike is such an effect that you should never disregard the card that grants it. This one, while unbelievably steep, is still strong enough to carry your run if you happen to get it. Overgorger One of the most fun cards in the game. A second Penumbra, a very strong addition. Umbra Stone Trample also solves Umbra's problem of backlines rather impressively. Blazing Bolts gets an additional 30 random damage each time you cast it until it loses its purge conditional. I think it hits 4 times at max level. Make sure you don't upgrade it before its max level. Shadow Siege, a card for a brave soul. This guy will kill a third of a Covenant 25 Seraph by himself, so definitely worth it, but is a royal pain in the ass to play. Artifacts Abandoned Antumbra Not a bad addition by any means. Keeps a free supply of morsels. Chain of Gems, a very weird one. Damage Shield is a very strong mechanic, so having it free for each time you summon the creature is excellent. Especially with a Melting Remnant Alliance, you can recycle creatures through the fight. Commemorative Spike Morsel Miners are the rarest of the bunch, so not as terrible as a one-time deal. Definitely overshadowed by the Abandoned and Tumbra though. Fossilized Fact if you've got any amount of Gorge-activated creatures, and this one's one of the best artifacts in the game, as Gorging creatures are very, very strong without an exception, at least in this patch. Mask of Penumbra There are no bad relics that let you draw cards. Mind Jets Plus 2 capacity for the middle floor. Set up your Penumbra factory to the middle floor and you got it. I'm not certain if I prefer this one to the other relics here. It looks like it's one of the best, but it's never performed for me. Refined Void Lifesteal 2 assures you're getting the damage you dealt as healing, which means most creatures will stick around a lot more often. Shade Lamp is probably the best morsel creating relic. Teeth of Gold This one's a stopgap solution to Umbra's backline problem, 
However, since that problem is a huge pain in the ass, this relic ends up being godlike. Winged Technology This one lets Morsel's chomp block a bit better, but it's not ideal. Thank you for listening to my ramblings, and I'll be back with the Melting Remnant Clan next week. So, don't forget to subscribe, and have a nice day.